Extended power outages happen all over the United States for various reasons. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two installations and devices that can be installed in order to heat your house like you normally would when the power is on. And they're also gonna allow for you to use a lot of the modern conveniences in your home that require electricity. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first installation that we'll go over that I highly recommend everybody at least look into is this right here. This is a transfer switch and this works in tandem with a generator. Now for me personally, I set this one up to where I have all of my circuits that I consider a necessity in the event of a power outage. So I can power this using my small generator. Well, the way this works and why it's probably gonna be considered the safest device that can be installed for this is while utility power is on is the way that it gets its power is it actually gets it from a breaker that's coming from the main breaker panel over there and it's running through that conduit into the transfer switch. But when we have a power outage, obviously power is going to discontinue to flow through that conduit, through the wiring that's going in through that conduit and into the transfer switch. And now we need to hook it up to a generator. Well, the way that we do that is this black cable that's coming out of the top of the transfer switch is going up through the ceiling, through the walls and to a power inlet box that's mounted on the wall to where then I plug in my generator. At that point, I would then turn on my generator and then have power flowing through it, therefore sending the power back through that cable and to this transfer switch. When that happens on this particular transfer switch, this orange light over here where you see a little picture of a generator and then you've got over here this green light that has utility lines, this orange light is gonna start glowing. And then in order to just switch it over to using generator power, all I have to do is push this button and it will switch it right over to generator power. And then when it does that, it completely separates itself from that main panel so we don't have to worry about the power that's back feeding into this transfer switch getting out to the utility lines. Now, two things about a transfer switch when you compare it to what I'm gonna show you after this installation, there are kind of some cons. Number one, transfer switches generally have a higher cost, not only in the unit itself, there is actually quite a bit to installing a transfer switch, but for the most part, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have two larger gauge wires that are going from here over to the main panel to a double pole breaker that is supplying the power to the transfer switch while the utility power is on. You're also going to have wiring going from each one of the circuit breakers, a neutral wire and a hot wire that are then gonna be going through that conduit into the main panel. And then once you pick out which circuit breakers you essentially wanna move over here, the wire from that circuit breaker will be removed, the hot wire, You'll have to connect it to the wire that is then going into this panel and to whatever circuit breaker you want it to be on. Also, the neutral wire that is going through that will also need to be connected to the neutral wire of that particular circuit. But why this is so great, you're able to power your furnace. You're able to power your heat pump. Again, assuming that you've got a big enough generator and everything's hooked up the way that it needs to be. And you're also able to power your essential circuits, whatever you deem necessary you're able to have your kitchen lights. You're able to possibly have heated water, lighting in specific rooms, big one, fridges and freezers. You wanna make sure that your fridges and freezers have power going to them at all times so that food doesn't go bad. And then of course, everybody's situation will be different. But this is a fantastic solution in order to help keep your family warm in the winter time in the event of a power outage, along with some added perks. Now this particular transfer switch is made by Generac. This is a 30 amp transfer switch. I believe they're going for somewhere in the range of around $500. That's just for the transfer switch itself. You'll need wiring. It does usually include the power inlet box with it, but you can generally expect for this job to take anywhere from three to five hours to complete, just depending on how complicated your system is going to be, how far you're gonna be running your cables, and really just how efficient you are at installing it. And of course, like always, I'll have links for this along with some other transfer switches that I do recommend. There are some other really good ones out there along with the tools and materials and what I'm gonna show you in the next install. You can find links for all of it down in the description down below. All right, so here is the next installation and this is one that I highly, highly recommend for most people. And the reasons for that is with this installation, you're actually capable, again, it's gonna depend on your generator, you're capable of being able to run 
all of the circuits on your house. Now this piece of metal that you see right here, this is called an interlock kit. We use this in conjunction with that power inlet box right down there. That is where the generator will plug into. The wiring is running through that conduit and then up into this panel through this circuit breaker. And then for me personally, it goes to that main panel that you saw earlier with the transfer switch. Now, the reasons why I recommend this for most people, this is not taking away from the transfer switch, but this particular installation is quite a bit less expensive than the transfer switch and it's way easier than the transfer switch as well so again like i said this is called an interlock kit and the way this works is it slides back and forth so that the main breaker and my breaker that is bringing in the power from the power inlet box they cannot be on at the same time so right now my main is on and I cannot turn on that generator breaker. Likewise, when I turn the main breaker off and I slide this over to the left, I can only turn on my generator breaker and I can no longer turn on the main breaker. The reason why this is so important is number one, it's code. You have to have this if you're going to install this particular application to where you're back feeding your main panel. It is to eliminate the possibility of you having the generator breaker on, which is back feeding power, and the main breaker on at the same time. And during a power outage, if you had both of them on at the same time, you would be back feeding power back into the utility and you would be putting not only linemen in danger, but possibly also your neighbors as some of your electricity is going to go back into those power lines. They make interlock kits for different panels and different configurations, but for the most part, your generator breaker will always need to be up or down. Depending on where your main circuit breaker is, those two are going to be close to each other so that the interlock kit can do its job. The interlock kits can range in price just depending on your particular panel, what's available for it. They can range anywhere from I've seen $20 all the way up to $200, $300. Again, it all just depends. But for the majority of panels and people, they're going to be able to get it for or around that lower price. So just a brief overview about how this is all installed. Again, this is an overview. So if you want a better demonstration, I'll have a link for that video at the end of this video. But the way that this works is we generally start with the power inlet box, pick where we want to mount it at, mount it onto the wall. And then you're going to want to have a green, a white, and two black or a black and a red wire, whichever you want to choose, running into that power inlet box. And of course, you'll need to pick the proper gauge depending on if it's a 30 amp or 50 amp power inlet box. If it's a 30 amp box, you're going to want at least 10 gauge and depending on your load requirements, you may even need to go up to eight gauge. If it's 50 amp, generally you're gonna wanna use six gauge wire. Then each of those wires are gonna be inserted into their corresponding spots on the power inlet box. The instructions will walk you through exactly which wires go in which holes and then tighten down. The wiring from that box will be run through some conduit into the main panel. And then you're gonna have a ground wire, a neutral wire, and two hot wires. Well, the ground wire is going to get connected to the ground bus bar. The neutral wire is going to get connected to the neutral bus bar. Now, my particular application, since I'm installing it out at my service, which is my main panel, that's my main, that's my first term of disconnect, the neutral and the ground is bonded there. So in my case, they went on the same bus bar. But if you have a sub panel, they may be separated and you may see that you've got a bunch of bare copper wires on one side or green insulated wires and on the other side you may see a bunch of white wires so you'll need to pay attention to that and then there's two black hot leads that will be inserted and screwed down inside of that circuit breaker depending on if you got a 30 amp power inlet box or a 50 amp power inlet box it'll either be a 30 amp double pole breaker or a 50 amp double pole breaker then once those are screwed in then the circuit breaker gets pushed into the panel then you're going to need to take your interlock kit and on the face plate of your panel there's going to be instructions for your specific panel and installation as to how it's going to be done but for the most part you're going to have to drill out some holes tighten down the base plate of the interlock kit to that face plate and then put the second plate on top, which is what slides back and forth or up and down. Put that in on top of the base plate using some bolts and then tightening those bolts down using the nuts that will be included with your kit. Once the interlock kit is installed, the face plate can be reinstalled on the circuit breaker panel. So in my opinion, this really is an incredibly easy installation. Overall, in order to install the power inlet box, run the wiring and install the interlock kit, 
it took me around an hour and a half to two hours to do. This power inlet box at the time cost around $35 or $40. I think they've gone up a little bit in price since then. That's for the 50 amp version. And then of course I have wiring, conduit, and the interlock kit. So this particular installation can vary anywhere from probably I would guess around $70 all the way up to $250, $300 if it's done by the homeowner. Again, this is not an install video and I always recommend make sure that you follow the instructions included with whatever you're installing and also make sure that your local jurisdiction allows you to install these. Also, if you flat out don't feel comfortable or don't want to install it, hiring an electrician is always considered the best route. However, at this current time, I won't even begin to try to approximate how much they would charge to install this or the transfer switch. But with this particular setup, I'm able to run my entire home with my 12,000 watt generator that includes my heat pump, my refrigerators, freezers, all my lighting, computers, TVs, my well pump, my gas water heater. So the key with this particular installation, while I really do like it, I recommend it for most people, make sure you understand the limits of your generator and make sure you only have as many circuit breakers on as your generator can handle at any given time. Also, this is the soft start kit that I mentioned earlier that I have installed on my four ton unit. This dramatically reduces the inrush current or the wattage required to start up my AC or my heat pump and it can reduce it by anywhere from 50% to 75%. So not only would this allow for a smaller generator to run an AC unit or heat pump, but in my instance, it allows me to not only run this, but also run pretty much everything else in my house without any concern at all. Which if you wanna learn more about this, how I installed it and the actual results that I got before and after, I'll have a link for that video down in the description down below. All right, so now I'm gonna quickly demonstrate for you how this all works using my power inlet box and interlock kit. I'll be using my larger generator. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm going to get that generator started up. I'm gonna turn off the main breaker, flip the interlock kit over, turn on the generator breaker, and now my circuit panel is being powered by my generator. And just as a demonstration, I'll show you my heat pump turning on on generator power. So I'll turn the thermostat on, I've got another camera looking at the AC unit in real time and another one looking at the generator. And as you can see, it was able to start up my four ton unit without any issue whatsoever. It barely pulled down on the generator and now I'm able to choose. I can have cool air, I can have heat and I can easily do it using my generator. In fact, I can do it so easily that I'm gonna show you that I can run my four ton unit using my much smaller generator, which is a 30 amp application, it has 6,700 starting watts and 5,500 running watts. So I'm gonna go ahead, start that up, turn on the thermostat, and as you can see, the four ton unit started up without any issue whatsoever. I was actually surprised at how little it pulled down on my smaller generator, and all the credit for that goes to that soft start kit that I have installed on my unit. But this just goes to show that it is possible to run a larger AC unit or heat pump using a smaller generator in the event of a power outage, therefore being able to run that heat pump and keep your house and your family from freezing. Now, if you found value in this video, but you'd like to learn more about how I went about installing the interlock kit and the power inlet box in order to power my entire house, if you'd like a more detailed explanation of that and also demonstration, I'll post a link to that video right over here. When you click on it, it'll take you directly to it. Or if you'd like to learn more about the differences between a 30 amp and a 50 amp application and what might work best for you, I'll post a link to that video right over here. So I hope that you found value in this video. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.